I am back in Texas, and behind me is the Palo Duro Canyon, which is the second largest canyon in the United States, and I love coming out here. And this weekend, I am with my good friend Dirk, who is the owner of Maris Adventure Park, and they have created a whole new overland route that we're gonna be doing over the next three days called the Trail Recon Challenge. I'm super excited to share this with you. There's gonna be so much to see, so much to explore, and we're gonna find some really cool camp spots, and I will tell you more about how you can come out here and do this very same course. I'm super excited about this, guys. We're gonna have a blast over the next three days. I'm starting off this adventure on the backcountry roads just outside of Amarillo, Texas. From there, it's about a 30 mile drive past several large ranches and wide open farmlands. And the terrain out here is as flat as flat can get. There are no mountains or rolling hills for as far as I can see. And I remember the first time I came out this way, it made me question if I was heading in the right direction. But once you get to the Maris Adventure Park, where the Palo Duro Canyon is, the flat, endless ground falls away and you are presented with some spectacular views. I met up with Dirk and we set out to begin our three-day adventure here, running the new Trail Recon Extreme Challenge course for the very first time. Now there are over 53 miles of trails out here from easy green trails to very challenging double black diamond trails and there are epic campsites scattered all around. I have been out here several times and I still haven't seen it all and I'm amazed at just how beautiful this entire area is. By linking together dozens of trails out here, Dirk and his team have created the Trail Recon Challenge and the Trail Recon Extreme Challenge courses and will be running the Extreme course this weekend. Both routes will take you about three days to complete, but the extreme course will require several more hours on the trail each day to complete and will challenge your vehicle and driving skills. If you are looking for a more relaxed and scenic experience, then the non-extreme route is the way to go. I've been talking to Dirk about this for several months, but this is the first time I'm running this course in person, and I can't wait to see what's in store. Dude, this is like my sixth time out here and it's still just beautiful, man. The red and the green, it's gorgeous out here. Does it ever get old? No, I mean, we've, we've been here for 18 months yeah. and I mean, I see this canyon very regularly and it hasn't gotten old. And I actually told Kristen one time, if this ever starts getting old, then I know we're probably done with this project or something like that. But I mean, I am excited. Every time I get to run trails, I'm excited. Yeah, so it's I love beautiful. it. Now yeah. we're camping uh, somewhere down here. Yeah, Tonight. just kind of right behind you in the meadows. Okay. We're actually here at Hetz's Bluff. This is the first kind of picture stop on okay. the Trail Recon Challenge. Okay. So this is one of the first spots where you're going to get out, you're going to take a picture. Yeah. And as we run to the first camp tonight, we've got uh, four more trails. And all these trails are connected together to yeah. create a great experience of yeah. anything from rim trails down to the bottom and get us to that, that first campsite tonight. Awesome. Well, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to see how this all comes together. And we we got a lot of wheeling to do, though. We're going to be out here for... I don't know, what do you got, 13 hours, 15 hours? We're going to be high for a while. Yeah, so we, we talked about running the extreme version yeah. of it, right? Yeah. So we were thinking 17 to 18 oh, yeah. hours yeah. of four low wheeling. We're going to get after it this weekend, guys. It's going to be fun. So, Dirk, that said uh, Cable Point back there. Why, uh, why is this called Cable Point? Yeah, Brad, so in just about five minutes, we're gonna be pulling up to a cable system that's over 100 years old that spans from the top of the canyon all the way down into the bottom of the canyon. And a lot of people don't know this because we don't actually have tall trees around here, but there used to be a, a pretty big population of white cedar trees that were 30, 40 foot tall. And that's the wood that they used to log out of the canyon to build everything around Amarillo and the Texas Panhandle because there wasn't a lot of trees around this, this area. Wow, that's crazy to think about. Big old massive trees out here once upon a time. Wow. That's pretty cool. A lot of history here then, huh? There is a ton of history in Paladora Canyon. And one of the cool things is the area that we're going to be camping at tonight, there's actually still some of those really tall cedar trees there. So we can actually get a look at those, but 
Yeah, the, the thing that baffles me is, as we'll go through some of these trails, is how they got such large pieces of wood up seven, 800 foot of elevation with these cable systems. I mean, it's truly uh, unbelievable. Yeah, that's some, uh, some ingenuity back then for sure. So Dirk, drop zone is uh, it's a pretty good drop. This is not for the beginner or intermediate, correct? No, this is definitely a black level trail, advanced trail. And uh, there's definitely some steep pitches here with some uh, cliffs. In different parts, so you want to know what you're doing coming down drop zone. And any, uh, any advice that folks have never done this before? Yeah, I mean, the first thing is really just take some time at the top to get eyes on the line coming down. And the other thing too, is you're definitely gonna wanna keep your wheels turning. Uh, some people wanna just lock up their brakes, but you lose your steering, so. It's gonna be important to keep it rolling and uh, keep your heart rate down. Yeah, definitely getting uh, flexy through here, but this is fun. It's not too not too intense, but it's definitely, uh, definitely gets you pitching and rolling. Yeah, this is a, a pretty short trail, but it's a really fun trail that kind of takes you into the floor of the canyon. And uh, like you said, it's not, there's nothing hardcore on here, but uh, definitely just want to kind of make sure you know the line coming down. very steep section of trail right now and normally I would probably throw on a rear locker I don't think I'm gonna need it though but my lockers are not working like they should oh no this is no problem the tires are eating this up but this is super steep I love it out here there's so many fun trails and it's not boring you're totally engaged the entire time I love this place it's so much fun guys
All right, guys, so here is my locker state of affairs. You can see I've got the little flashing light over here, and then I've got the other light here that's got the exclamation point, and then my rear locker is just flashing. So I just had the Jeep at the dealership four days ago because I wanted them to take a look at this and they said, yeah, it's the rear sensor and it's a pretty common problem for it to go bad on Wranglers and Gladiators. We will order you one. It'll take about six to eight weeks for it to get here, but you should still be able to use your lockers. Well, I think I just realized that is not the case. I tried to use the rear and the front and the rear and no joy. So uh, I am doing the rest of this extreme challenge uh, without it. Now, if you want to come out here you do not have to do the extreme part. There is some easy and moderate stuff, but uh, we're getting after it a little bit, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't need the lockers. What an awesome day out on the trail. I love coming out to Maris. This is just such a great place to go wheel. And that is only a small section of the Trail Recon Challenge. There's still many more miles to conquer and I cannot wait to see what's to come. And the great thing is, is along the Trail Recon Challenge, there are campsites like this one. A nice open shaded area, flat, it's perfect. You can come out here and camp and just relax. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna unwind a little bit, reminisce about the day, cook up a little chow, and then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go explore some more. I cannot wait. Well, it is just about 8.30, and Dirk and I have been having a great time hanging out talking about life and just kind of catching up. And we realized uh, it's getting late. We probably should cook some dinner. So we're gonna fire up the grills and make something real quick. Tonight I have a bison ribeye inspired by my good buddy Matt when we were up in Colorado. Uh, I've got a little rub I'm gonna put on here and hopefully this will turn out. And Dirk, what are you cooking up over there, buddy? So I'm cooking some uh, Italian flavored uh, chicken breast and green beans. Oh, he's getting way fancier than I am, but we're gonna get some dinner. And you got the you got everything all laid out, ready to go. Yeah. Are you a big cooker? Uh, not at the house usually. Kristen loves cooking, and she okay. does a, an amazing job of cooking. But I really enjoy camp cooking. Right. So um, yeah, I love getting out and just kind of cooking my own thing, and, and okay. for other people too. But right. uh, you, I do enjoy that. You got the cast iron. Yeah. I, I was actually looking for my smaller because I have a second smaller cast iron. I couldn't find it, but uh, I do love cooking with cast iron. Okay. I know you said you like to cook, but I think you're a lot like me that just quick and easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to cook does not mean like I want to spend like seven hours cooking. No. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that um, that I highly value is efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really the, I want to make everything from scratch guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. I like watching people do it and I like uh -huh. eating it. Yeah, 
I'm a little more basic. You guys know. You guys know. Keep it simple. The steak's pretty good, though. Dude, I love this camp spot. It's beautiful. Uh, you got, what is it? I mean, you got like a little vineyard here, right? You got some grapes Yeah, we growing. got wild grapes and we started trimming it out. So maybe we'll have grape sticks. <laughs> That's <like>. crazy. <laughs> and then there were, some, there were some sheep up in the mountains. I couldn't grab the camera quick enough to film them, but what were those? So those are Audad. Okay. And they're a Barbary sheep from Africa that was introduced into the canyon system in the 1950s. And now there's a population, an estimate of over 30,000 in Paladour Canyon. Oh, wow. Guys, it was super yeah. cool. I, I couldn't film it. Hopefully we can find some more uh, today when we're out on the trail. But they were like on this, I mean, it's like a wall face and they were just hopping up there like it was no big deal it was pretty cool to see those guys this morning so yeah they're, they're incredibly athletic on the on the canyons yeah, yeah. So, a beautiful morning man this is a perfect spot we've been in the shade we've had some coffee good breakfast now we're gonna get after it again today what's uh what's the plan what, what kind of terrain are we gonna see today yeah so today we got a full run ahead of us we uh we're going to run a, a really a big variety of trail like yesterday we're mostly kind of on the dirt today we're gonna be sand, dirt, rocks, and we're going to be running some, some black trails today. Okay. So there's going to be a little bit of get after it, and this is for the Trail Recon Extreme Challenge, is the right. version that we're running. Correct. So, um, really excited about today. We're going to see some cool stuff, and we're going to get in some caves before the sun oh, goes yeah. down. Today. That's going to be awesome, yeah. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you are interested in coming out here to Maris Adventure Park and running the Trail Recon Challenge, you do have the option of an easy, mild uh, adventure or the little extreme one, which is kind of what we're doing we'll have a little bit of fun and the cool thing is we haven't even talked about this Dirk is next month we're doing the trail recon summit right here in the park and folks are gonna for the very first time have an opportunity to come run this course I'm super excited about that I know you've been working hard to make this a great event yeah so I'm really excited I mean about the the trail recon summit and you know we've been we've been talking about this for a while and uh, this is a cool opportunity to, to bring the Trail Recon fans together to connect. We've got, it's, it's four days, three nights. We've got catered meals. We've got a potluck meal, which I'm excited yeah. about that, yeah, just yeah, to see yeah. what everybody cooks. But we've got lots of guided trail runs. We've got a night run that uh, Casey Highlights is going to be uh, helping us with. Um, but it's just going to be a cool opportunity for people to hang out, to connect with like-minded people, and that's happening next month in yeah. October. If you guys are interested, I will leave links down below. Go check it out. We're going to have an amazing time out here. But. All right, dude, speaking of amazing time, let's go hit the trails. Let's do it. All right. Dirk, what do you got there, buddy? Yeah, so I've got a piece of petrified wood here. And as you can see on the ground, got multiple pieces just laying in this area. 
And this is actually something that we have an abundance of in the canyon here. And there's certain areas where there's just a high concentration of it. And from what I've been told, and we're actually going to get some geologists out here to educate us uh, a little bit more about it, but um, one, it takes a very long time for this to happen to wood, but it's, uh, another thing that we've been told is it takes a special type of event also. Sometimes with extreme heat, but it doesn't actually burn up the wood. It actually uh, hardens it, but it's always cool to see this. And you, you know, when you look at a piece like this, you can see the crystallization on it, the different colors, the grains. So uh, I love just picking it up and just kind of looking at it. So cool, man. It's like a log, but <laughs> it's, it's like a log, but super heavy. Oh, look at all the crystals in there. Oh, that's so cool. I love finds like this. Well, it's just a little after noon and we have been having a blast out here on the trails. These trails are so much fun and the scenery along the way, the changing terrain, all of it, I just love it. So we've pulled up to this spot, we're gonna have a little lunch and then I wanna quickly uh, share with you what I was talking to Dirk about, about his Jeep. I think you guys will find this very interesting. Buddy, what a great spot for lunch and what an amazing day. I yeah. love it out here, man. Uh, watching your Jeep get after it on the trail is, it's pretty inspiring because this is not a Rubicon. And I wanted to share with these guys, talk about your Jeep real quick. Yeah, so this is actually a 2014 JKU Sport. Yeah. And uh, when I bought it, it had a lift on it, it had 35s on it, but what I did is, you know, I, I went back and forth a lot. Should I get a Rubicon? But I bought this for 25K yeah. and I already had a ton of stuff on it. And I decided to keep what I had, but I, I redid the whole driveline. So um, it's still got the Dana 30 up front, but chromoly axles, uh, it's been gusseted, new driveline. So everything is pretty solid, but I do run 37s. Yeah. I've been running 37s for over two years now. Yeah. And we wheel a lot. Right. You, yeah. A lot of hours on these yeah. difficult trails. But, but I'm watching you. You're not, you're not hitting it hard on the throttle. You're mm -hmm. really purposeful about how you're getting through an obstacle. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, f for me, I enjoy the challenge of trying to figure out. It's like a chess game, like, hey, how do I need a position? How do I need to do that? But uh, I very rarely throttle a lot because I do not, you know, if, sure. if I go after it and start bouncing around, I'm probably going to break something. But, right. you know, so for me, it is about the skill around wheeling. And I think if you're careful about your lines and you really watch your throttle control, 
I think you can do a lot still even on a 30. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, the, there is some confidence that you get with yeah. having a 44 or a 60 and, you know, a well-built suspension setup. But I think you're proving uh, by just as much time as you're spending out here that you can. there is another way to do it. So that's pretty cool, man. very steep with some loose dirt and some loose large rocks. Normally through a section like this I would have turned on my rear locker just for a little bit of extra traction but because they were not working I really just had to power my way up. Not the way I like to normally wheel but there really wasn't a whole lot of choice here if I wanted to get up to the top. Getting up however wasn't my biggest challenge. Going down this next section would prove to be an even bigger problem. That's right, the Jeep just stalled. So the Jeep just died coming down this decline. And this is something I've seen happen before in Marco's Jeep when we're in a decline. And I'm about, I'm a little over a quarter tank and I think there's a problem with the pickup problem is it won't start and I can't get it in neutral so we're gonna have to manually pull it in neutral to coast it down to get it level to get it restarted it's a little frustrating I had to pull the manual neutral strap located under the plastic door at the base of the shift lever however once I did that you can see here that my tires were pinned up against two large rocks so Dirk needed to strap me so I could get free of those rocks and get level it's always good to wheel with a buddy because this was a very precarious situation. But thankfully, once the Jeep was level, it started back up. And oh, this wouldn't be the last time we would be using a strap on this trip.
Dirk was hearing a noise, so we're just gonna see if we can take a listen here. To what's going on? Oh yeah. Did you guys hear that pop? So I think that could be a number of things. It could be the ring and pinion, maybe a tooth, and hopefully it's not an axle shaft. Well, it could be a lot. Of, yeah, it could be it could be a lot of those things that make that noise. But um, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely since it started making that noise, it's it's gotten progressively worse pretty quick. Yeah. So, best course of action. Um, so I think I'm gonna need to kind of take the the quickest punch out out of here. Okay. And uh, probably swap jeeps. See if Kristen can come down and get this one. There we go. Take it back up, and uh, I'll just throw my stuff in the other jeep and. Uh, yeah. I'll just sleep in the back of that Jeep tonight. Okay, yeah. there we go. So, all right, easy enough. It happens. It happens. All right, we're really not sure what's going on, whether it's a transfer case or the ring and pinion, but we're coming up this pretty steep climb, and uh, he just lost everything. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to give him a tow out of here. So I'm going to strap him up and we'll get him up to the headquarters. The good thing about being out here at the park is that we're not far away from help and he just happens to have another Jeep here. So our adventure will go on. I'm just gonna be a little bit later than we thought. But it's all good, look, he's smiling, man, he's smiling. <laughs> it's all part of it. two attempts were unsuccessful just could not get enough traction but we got these guys in a Ram TRX and so we're gonna see if them hooked up to me hooked up to Dirk and we can get him at least up and over the hill and back to uh, headquarters All right, guys, we made it up here to the Maris headquarters, and Dirk is going through the fun process of transferring everything from one Jeep to the next. But the good news is he has a Jeep to do that, so the adventure still continues. Now, we were going to go check out some caves tonight, but I think uh, I think maybe we'll just go, uh, go to camp, chill, and have a little dinner, and then we will check out the caves tomorrow. What do you say, Dirk? I think that's a good plan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thanks to those guys at the TRX. We couldn't have done it without them. Well, we did get to camp after dark, and uh, we've set up, and J Dirk and I have just been hanging out, chatting for a little bit, and he's gonna start cooking dinner here uh, shortly. He's gonna make some steaks and some asparagus, but what an amazing day of adventure. We had just about every element you can think of. We were, you know, doing some recovery, we had some breakdown, and we just explored some awesome technical trails, but it was a long day, and that's okay, because we knew we were doing the extreme portion of the Trail Extreme Recon Challenge, and so, just to keep that in mind, if you want to come out here and do this, there's two variations. There's one which is a little more casual, and there's the other one which we're doing, which is getting after it, and you're going to put in the hours. And we're having a blast, and I cannot wait to see what's in store for tomorrow. We're not done. There is still more to come. But tonight, we're going to have a little dinner, we're going to relax, and, uh, and get prepared to be ready for tomorrow. Well, Dirk, thanks for volunteering to cook dinner. Uh, I was actually considering just having peanut butter and jelly tonight, but uh, what do you got going on? No, after a day like today, we need to eat well. I think so. so. Um, first off, we're going to start off with uh, something called Budavorce. Okay. And this is uh, a really kind of authentic South African sausage. Okay. So it's got a beef and pork mixture. Um, but it's just really good. It cooks fairly quickly. Okay. So I'm gonna cook this for us for an appetizer and then we are gonna have ribeye and asparagus oh, tonight. That's awesome. Now the South African sausage, I think it's important to mention, you grew up in South Africa. So this is uh, near and dear to your heart. It is, yeah. So this is actually um, one of the guys that works with our bird flow team. He's also a South African and they recently made some and whenever wow, they yeah. make a lot of South African food, he sends me some and I always appreciate it. So this is a special occasion and we're definitely going to oh. 
Uh, really enjoy this. Awesome, man. I'm excited to try it. Thanks for bringing that out. There's some good savory smells going on at camp, dude. Thanks for making dinner tonight. And I'm gonna try the Buddha Vors. You nailed it that time, yes. Buddha Vors for the very first time. I never had it before, but it smells really good and it's got a nice little crisp on there. Mmm. Oh wow, it's really juicy. Mmm. Oh, that's good, man. There's a lot of flavor in there. A little bit of spice, but not like a lot of spice, but Man, I love how juicy it is. Yeah, that's uh, that's the pork in there that that really helps uh, add flavor and bring in bring in some of the juice. Oh yeah, that's so good. Thanks for making dinner tonight, man. Absolutely. Awesome. They used to love the old school Pathfinders, mm -hmm. and they were actually, I think. Um, the ones that I got to ride in, they were actually built pretty tough back, back yeah. in the day. Well, good morning, guys. We have had an awesome evening and the perfect morning. It is just beautiful down here. The weather is perfect. Sunrise coming up over the mountains. It's, it's almost like we're, we're in a little section of Moab. I really love this little area. Uh, and that's the great thing about this park is it's so diverse. Uh, so we are, we, we've had a lots of coffee, uh, just chilling, but uh, we're gonna go hit the trail, the last section of the Trail Recon Challenge. And then uh, Dirk is excited to show me this cave that we're gonna go check out, so I cannot wait to check that out. Uh, today is gonna be, it's gonna be a great day. So we're wrapping up and we're gonna get on the trail here in just a few minutes.
Dirk, that last section of trail was awesome. Uh, a lot of off-camber stuff, definitely an awesome way to wrap this up. Now, you have been talking about this cave all weekend. How far do we gotta hike to get there and what do we have looked forward to? Yeah, so the nice thing is from here, we just have a short hike. Literally, it's gonna be five to seven minute hike. And then we are going to see a big hole opening up into the earth and we get to walk all the way through this. So it's gonna take us probably about 10 minutes to get through the cave, so it's not very long, but it is really cool, beautiful, and it's a, kind of a slot cave, so just lots of cool colors in there too. Awesome. Oh, that's massive. Yeah, this one's, this one's big. You don't have to kind of fall out. This kind of stuff. Oh, it just goes, man. Super cool. Oh, yeah, I got him on film too. Look at him. This section's kind of cool. Um, you can just straddle the shelf, and then where that log is, you can actually step down that log and walk down. So you're just kind of straddling the shelf until you get there. Three days, Trail Recon Extreme Challenge complete. Dude, what an amazing, <laughs> what an amazing route. We've seen so many cool things along the way. Just the, the trails, the easy, the moderate, the super technical, the whole environment out here. Some petrified wood, yep. some caves. Pretty awesome, man. I, I had a blast and you know, we talked about this morning, like we're both a little tired. I yeah. mean, like, you know, when you do the extreme version of the Trail Recon Challenge, it's it's a lot. I mean, you got to get ready for it. It's, yeah. it's, gonna, it's a hard run. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. not easy. If you want to come out here and just, you know, camp and relax and have a little slower pace and just enjoy the scenery, that's an option for you. That's the challenge. Yeah, that, that's a great option. That's the challenge. But if you want to get after it and do what we just did for the last three days, the extreme challenge, Awesome. I love it, man. <laughs> I cannot wait to have some folks come out here and run this and start hearing some feedback from it. I think yeah. you guys are going to really enjoy this. And another reminder that we have the Trail Recon Summit coming up right here at Maris Adventure Park. And I will leave links down below where you can sign up for that. And you can sign up for the Trail Recon Challenge as well. Yeah. And guys, it's a great place. You got to come out here. If you're out in the area of Texas, come on out. Say hello to Dirk. They will treat yeah. you right. And, uh, and you will have a blast out here. So, buddy, thank you. That was awesome. For, for an amazing three you. days, man. Guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.